Does your puppy have diarrhea and you don't know why? Well, there are many causes of puppy diarrhea, but one of the most common is coccidia, a parasite that can cause major issues, especially for young puppies and kittens. In this episode of the Pet Care Pro Show, we have Cynthia joining us to talk about coccidia and cryptosporidium, which is a particularly nasty type of coccidian that can be resistant to traditional coccidia treatment options. Now, before we start, we wanted to ask you to consider subscribing to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel by clicking this little red heart or the subscribe button down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay, now let's talk coccidia. What are some signs your pet may be dealing with this intestinal parasite? Coccidia is something to take very seriously, especially in puppies under eight weeks old, as it can be fatal. You may notice that the puppy or kitten has watery, mucousy like diarrhea. As it progresses, the pet may experience bloody diarrhea then too, and you'll most likely notice your pet having more potty accidents and being unable to hold it. They may also be weak and very feverish. And in these issues, they can happen in both dogs and cats. Absolutely. Coccidia is transferred through feces and it can be spread from puppies to kittens and vice versa. Oftentimes, the puppies are first exposed to coccidia through their mother's infected feces, and once exposed, the coccidian parasite is always present in the animal's intestine. Then in times of stress, it makes itself known. Some pets stress more than others, so some are more prone to getting coccidia. Weaning, traveling, and moving are all stressors that result in coccidia causing problems. So if your puppy has diarrhea, how can you test for coccidia? The Paratest test kit gives results in 15 minutes and diagnoses most major feline and canine intestinal coccidian. Otherwise, your veterinarian can perform a fecal examination. The coccidian parasite is usually very visible under a microscope. And you'll want to make sure to do some sort of testing since there are several parasites that can act similar to coccidia. You want to make sure you're treating the right thing. Yes, absolutely right. Many people mistake coccidia for giardia, which is a different intestinal parasite. The thing is, treatment is different for these two parasites, so you want to make sure you are treating the right thing. Exactly. So if the test is positive for coccidia, how long does treatment take? Most people don't treat coccidia as long as they should, and it comes right back. Most treatments need to last at least 21 days. Sulfur drugs have long been used to treat coccidia, and they're also typically effective for prevention. I recommend talking to your veterinarian to see what is recommended for your pet. If your veterinarian does give you a prescription, you can contact the Revival Pharmacy or one of us pet care pro he pros here, and they would be happy to get that Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Well, meanwhile, during this time, preventing dehydration due to the diarrhea is also important. Absolutely. I recommend using an, an electrolyte such as our Breeder's Edge Puppy or Kitten Light to help maintain hydration and replenish those electrolytes. Puppy and Kitten Light can be easily mixed with warm water and can be given to nursing puppies and kittens as young as two weeks old. And that's a great idea. And also you recommend using a probiotic during this time as well. Yes, a probiotic such as our Doc Roy's GI Symbiotic supports the growth of good bacteria in the gut and helps remove bad bacteria from the GI tract. GI Symbiotics is recommended to minimize the potential for diarrhea, and it is a great support product to strengthen the dog or cat's immune system. Just remember when choosing the probiotic, though, be sure it can pass through the stomach, acid, and or enzymes, or you will be very disappointed if it sits in that stomach. GI Symbiotics does that and works well. And you actually recommend giving newborns the GI Symbiotics gel the day after they're born. I love this stuff. Start giving the GI Symbiotics on day two and continue through day seven. A puppy starts with a sterile gut, so we want to give the pup's immune system a great beginning and layer that good bacteria in that puppy's intestinal system before coccidia can cause a problem. Put a little bit on the end of your finger, two, three, maybe four times a day, and swipe it into their mouth. I say, too, why not start with mama before, you know, about two weeks before whelping even, with the granules that we have this in as well, all helping to keep that bad bacteria from taking over. Now, I want to talk about prevention of coccidia, as well as cryptosporidium in cats and dogs, but before we do, if you're finding this video helpful, click the like button below. Okay, so what is crypto and how is it different from normal coccidian? 
Cryptosporidium is a different type of coccidian that is more commonly seen in catteries. Kittens affected with crypto, abbreviation, shows more si most signs in before moving to a new home. Symptoms of crypto included neurological component along with drooling and diarrhea. They might also suffer from the lack of appetite, weakness, or lethargy. And crypto is often misdiagnosed. Right, Crypto cryptosporidium looks similar to normal coccidia, except that they are very tiny. It's best, they, best to send that animal's uh, feces to a lab to have it confirmed. Absolutely, and treatment is also different for crypto than it is for normal coccidia. Correct, drugs that work on normal coccidia do not have any effect on crypto, and that could become fatal for that poor puppy or kitten. So very important to get that checked to see what it really is. So talk to your vet about that and what medication would be best for your pet in this situation. Okay, now let's talk coccidian prevention. What advice do you have on that? Coccidia prevention needs to be started before birth and continued to the weaned babies. However, be cautious as many products are not safe in pregnant moms. You can never use a sulfur type drug between the 25th and 30th day of gestation as you increase the risk of cleft palate in dogs or cats. Another prevention tip, if, you're poss if possible, give your puppies and kittens their own place to run and play. Don't let them chase behind mom and dad out there in the big yard. Big dog and cats can usually handle the coccidia and giardia to a point, so giving the little ones a place of their own to run keeps them out of trouble with running into any fecal matter from the adults. Why subject the little ones to anything more than what's coming from their mom already? Absolutely, that is a great idea and a great tip there. And another important part of prevention includes insect and rodent control. Yes, mites, mice, cockroaches, rats can carry coccidia. You'll also want to practice strict sanitation and use disinfectants such as our Vircon or Oxine. Since coccidia spreads primarily through the feces, all fecal matter should be removed regularly to prevent food and water from becoming contaminated. Right. There are also several products you can give to pets to prevent coccidia. And for more information on those, you can check out the article Coccidia in Dogs and Cats in our Learning Center at RevivalAnimal.com. We've put a link to that in the description below as well. Or you can call one of our pet care pros like Cynthia here, and they would be happy to help you find the best solution. Yes, I don't think I have a day go by without something someone asking me about treatment or prevention options for coccidia. So please don't hesitate to call us. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. You have had some great advice here. And if you found this helpful, make sure to share this video with other dog and cat owners who you think could benefit. And if you have any other questions, comment below and we will get those answered. I'm Shelly with the Revival Education Team. This is Cynthia, a Revival Pet Care Pro. Thank you so much for joining us on this coccidia episode of the Pet Care Pro Show. Hi, if you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel so you don't miss our new videos. If you have more questions on coccidia or any other pet health issue, call our pet care pros at this number or check out our other pet health videos.